Hey guys, thinking this on Conqueror's Blade. Why you should be playing Conqueror's Blade? Why you should be getting this game and try or downloading it? Um, it's definitely one of my favorite games on Steam. I've been playing this game for a long time now. Um, so yeah, it's gonna it's basically for people who don't know anything about the game, who've never heard of it, and want to know what the game is. You know, uh, what the game has to offer. So I'm gonna go basically on that, like the contents of the game and what you really do. And if it interests you, 100% download it, bro. Give it a try. It's free to play. You're not gonna lose anything for trying for trying it out. So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna start off with is what the game is and how you play this game. Conquer's Blade is a 15v15 matchmaking strategy game on Steam. Players can choose one of 12 different classes that the game offers and then they will queue up for sieges or field battles. Each class has their own unique strengths, weaknesses, and also a variety of skills that they can use. When queued, players will be put in either the offensive or defensive team. The defensive team will spawn on top of a stronghold or a castle and they will be tasked to defend the points for a certain period of time. The offensive team spawns outside the stronghold or castle and then they will be tasked to take control of the points and conquer the city within the same period of time. Every player will spawn in with units that can be commanded and will fight alongside you. Units are a vital part of the game with over 50 different units to choose from. Units can be unlocked through doing challenges, or you can unlock them through the unit tree. The game offers a wide variety of units with different skills, passives, abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. There are infantry units such as swords, spears, hobbardiers, pikes. There are ranged units such as archers, crossbows, muskets. There are even different types of cavalry which include melee cavalry, ranged cavalry, and lancer cavalry or spear cavalry. On top of the wide variety of units the game offers, each unit also has their own skill tree which can greatly affect their play styles as well as their appearance. So is matchmaking the only thing the game has to offer? Well, no. If you click on them, you'll see a huge world map, a gigantic, extensive map, three different regions, uh, capitals to each of them. If you zoom in, it's even more stuff that you'll see. You'll see these towns, villages, and fortresses. It's, it is large, okay? And basically, this entire thing, this whole thing, is a gigantic battlefield. It's a huge, huge, huge battlefield. And what happens is, Territory War, it says here, starts in two days, two hours. It happens on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, EST is from 9 to 10. And what? And you and your house, so basically you join a house, right? Uh, basically an in-game clan. So you and your house members, your clan members, you know, 40, 50 of them, 30 of them, however many it is, go out in the open world during these Territory Wars, and you start taking over land, taking over uh, towns, villages, and these fiefs, basically. And you basically hold them. So, for example, like, this is owned by um, the Alliance I'm in, right? Kreese is my house. Here's Thoys. This is the, clan, the house that I'm in. We own Kreese, right? In Territory Wars, your houses can declare war on other houses, which are basically other player houses, and you'll have these huge fights for land, huge fights for territory. You'll have these huge defenses for land, huge defenses for territory. You'll also have a bunch of field battles because you'll just be charging into them, uh, trying to kill them before they get to your castle, whatever it is. Um, it is huge. It is an extensive fight. So what happens in Territory War that's pretty crazy is that everyone's in a Discord, right? You join your clan's Discord. Um, you'll have a, a leader or a shot caller telling you exactly what to do, organizing everything, and coming up with strategies, right? So in a siege battle, it's 15 v 15, but you're not really communicating with everyone because there's no voice chat. Uh, so everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. But in a territory war, you have someone like communicating, telling you exactly what to do. So you'll see some crazy defense strategies. You'll see some crazy offense strategies. Um, and the fights get even more intense and more serious because there's communication between everyone, you know? Um, so yeah, basically the siege matchmaking, that's all, all it really is is to get you, you get to prepare you for territory war. This is the end game content. This is what the game is really all about, um, participating in these territory wars, taking stuff over, uh, fighting in the open world. When your house owns thieves and stuff and they own land, you get rewarded each week for how much land you own. You could also even upgrade your own thief, like this thief's le level 1, you could actually upgrade it to level 2, get even more rewards, etc, stuff like that. Uh, and these these are pretty like decent rewards, some money, some, some items, so stuff like that. But at the end of the season, depending on how much land you're house is owned or how well they've done, you get a lot bigger rewards, like some really, really, really good rewards. So Territory War is definitely something you don't want to miss out on. It's also really fun. 
and this is pretty much what the end game is. Um, on top of territory wars, there's also a ranked scene in Conqueror's Blade, so you could do ranked matches on the weekends and um, basically go up the ranks, right? The highest is Grand Champion, um, and you get different rewards for getting different ranks. This one's re it's a really good reward. You get a, a pretty much uh, a purple and epic armor set. Um, yeah, and ranked is ranked can be pretty difficult, but but uh, it's also fun. It's just something to just test your skills. So that's also another thing instead of just doing regular sieges. So yeah, those two things are pretty much the end game content and other things you could do. So how does Conqueror's Blade make their money, right? You know, of all, with all this free content that they're throwing there, how are they making money? How is the company staying afloat, right? And is the game pay to win? So I'm going to talk about that right now. The game, the there are sovereigns in the game, which is kind of their in-game currency, right? And it is mainly used to buy cosmetics. Cosmetics are like a huge thing in the game, uh, which just skins here, but mainly the battle pass. Every season, there's a battle pass that comes for $10, right? And, um... There are rewards in the battle pass for, you know, with the battle pass and without the battle pass. Um, and these rewards are very mid. These rewards are, like, they don't really matter to you. They're, they're nothing crazy. Don't think, like, you're really missing out on anything major uh, if you don't have the battle pass. Uh, for in-game stuff, like, I'm talking about, like, oh, weapons or items or stuff like that affect in-game, like, uh, your character or anything like that. No. The reason people usually buy the battle pass is for the cosmetics. So... Using the battle pass, you'll have a unit skin. Like this is a unit skin that comes out for this for this season's battle pass. There's a mount skin. This is a mount skin that comes out for the battle pass. And then there's the uh, hero skin. And now all of these are limited skins that like after the battle pass, you pretty much can't get them, right? So like this, you're not gonna be able to get this after the battle pass is over. So that's why everyone buys a battle pass, and they usually get it for the cosmetics. The other rewards are like okay. But it's nothing game breaking. Like you don't really need the other rewards. The main thing that people get the battle pass for is for the skins. And even the seasonal store, all of this is just cosmetics. These aren't actual weapons. These are literally just weapon skins. Um, and they look cool and they look badass. And that's pretty much how the game makes most of their money through these badass cosmetic options, right? Um, you just you need unit attire. Like look at this. This is cool. This is hella cool, right? Unit unit skins, uh, hero skins, weapon skins. Pretty much uh, their main source of income. And you know. It gets me. I pay ten dollars for the see for the for the season pass just to get these cool attire and they just look mad dope. You know? And that's pretty much how the game um gets most of their money. I'd say the majority of their money is basically got through doing that through unit attire. Uh they even have this little chest uh thing where you can pay for keys and you really literally roll unit attire. All this unit attire, nothing is game breaking stuff. Like you're not gonna get like Oh, this weapon that does a million damage. You're not, you can't get that through paying money. And the only thing that I would say is pay to win is for the units. It's not even pay to win, so I'll explain it. The only thing I'd say that you could potentially exploit is the seasonal challenges, right? To get this unit, right? This is a really strong unit. You have to do these challenges for them, right? You could pay it off. And you could, if, you, if you're struggling with some challenges or if you don't, you don't want to wait... You could pay it off with some, um, with some in-game currency, right? But, so now you may think, like, oh, can people just buy an entire unit? That's not likely. You know why? Because to buy this unit, if you were not to do the challenges and you were just to buy him out, it would cost you $40. Literally, that's how much it would cost to basically pay, to, you to pay this one off, pay this one off, pay this one off, pay this one off, and you finally get the unit, and each thing is $10. So it's $10, 20 30 It's $40 to basically get the unit. So who is out here willing to spend forty dollars on you could technically you could if there's a player that really wants the unit that badly and he spends forty dollars to get the unit you know that's on him like he that's crazy that, that's pretty much the price of a, another game like but but um some i guess some people may may do that but it's not realistic and most players don't do that most players will do the challenges to get the unit and it will take them some time another thing is the unit challenges are meant to take around a few mo like around two months to do because um, unit challenges, they come out in a season, and the season's usually three months, so you're supposed to get that unit throughout the season, you're supposed to be playing throughout the season, and I'm doing the challenges throughout the season to get the unit, right, so, uh, finishing up these challenges probably takes, like, you know, a few, like, a, a month or two, and that's what it's supposed to be, you could pay it off, you could pay off some of it, honestly, right now, you could pay off, like, uh, this is probably, like, like, around five dollars, because I, I kind of did parts of it already, uh, it's actually around, like, seven, eight dollars, actually. Whatever. And then you could pay it off, 
get to the next one and then obviously this one you have to do all the stages for so people do pay off some set challenges right but to buy the entire but to pay off everything to buy the unit most players don't do that that is literally forty dollars that's forty dollars for one unit you know there's so many units are they gonna if no one's gonna be spending like forty dollars eight dollars one hundred twenty dollars like on on getting these units and that's not that's not even like okay for example look here that's just for this guy he's spending forty dollars to get just this guy what about these three like is he gonna be spending money to get this guy this guy and this guy like you know if if you if people are rich like that the game loves you 100 percent go ahead but they make the money they make it so expensive to so that players aren't just paying to win everything like you're supposed to be playing the actual game so yeah that's pretty much the only pay to win option that you really have um but also it's a very unrealistic option but other than that the main source of income for this game is cosmetics and everyone loves cosmetics so that's pretty much everything about Conqueror's Blade. Uh, once again, this game is free on Steam, and it's you know it just has so much content for a free game. There's also no other game like this on the market. Like there's nothing like Conqueror's Blade out there right now. Um, that's why like if you ha liked anything in the video, like anything seemed fun for you, get this game and try it out today. Like it's free to play. You're not gonna lose anything. You're just gonna have some fun. Also, if you do get the game and you you know do enjoy the game, I'll link some beginner guides um, and some of my other videos. You can check it out on stuff in the game. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked the video.